The term best sniper can refer to either the sniper with the finest long-range accuracy or the most confirmed kills. Today, we'll pay greater attention to the sniper who has killed the most people. Most of you are already familiar with Chris Kyle, the American soldier who served as the model for the film American Sniper. According to the Department of Defense, he claimed 160 victories. Kyle tragically died after being shot at a shooting range in the United States. Despite not naming him, the British media claimed in 2015 that a Royal Marine was the world's deadliest sniper with 173 kills. But none of these shooting young guns can compare to the man we'll be talking about today. The greatest sniper ever. Hello everyone, this is AWZ. Welcome to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Enjoy. The consensus on the internet is that the subject of today's presentation is, in fact, the deadliest sniper to have ever lived. Simo Haiha was a second lieutenant in the Finnish army. He reportedly murdered between 505 and 542 people, according to reports. Russians who died as a result of his crimes during the Winter War. Finland and the Soviet Union engaged in a war that erupted in 1939 and lasted for slightly over three months. Even though it was a brief period of time, Hayha's legacy was cemented. According to reports, there were around 25,900 Finnish deaths and 126,900 Russian deaths during those three months. The Finnish military even kept track of Hayha's kills. Not how many people he killed on that particular day, but how many he had killed overall, is stated in the text. His largest day's death toll is estimated to have been 25. The report claims that on December 22, 1939, he killed 138 individuals. He murdered 199 individuals on January 26, 1940. He murdered 217 individuals on February 17th and 259 people on March 7th of the same year. He was severely injured, therefore that day wasn't the finest of his life. He was shot in the face by the Red Army, which is why images of him that are circulating online show a monster-like figure. Simo, I'm sorry for being so direct. However, the wound didn't significantly slow him down, and he lived a long life. He was born in 1905 and passed away in 2002 at the ripe old age of 97. Who was this man, though? He was the subject of a lot of propaganda, so the Finnish told all kinds of tales about him. During that time, war heroes played a significant role in many nations' national narratives, which served to instill optimism and pride in the populace. He was born in Finland, not far from the Russian border. He enlisted as a volunteer in the Finnish Civil Guard at the age of 20, and it was obvious he would be helpful. He was reputed to be an accomplished hunter prior to enlisting, but he had also won prizes for his marksmanship in numerous shooting contests. It appeared that he had accumulated so many prizes that they filled his entire home. Later, he joined the Finnish army as a sharpshooter. Since much of his combat took place in the snow, numerous images of him show him wearing nothing but white and like James Bond. It appears that the Soviets lagged the Finns a little in this area because their force was dressed in standard army garb. Because of this, they were quite simple to identify and kill, whereas Lucky Haiha was incredibly elusive. Following up on this, the Finnish media gave him the nicknames White Death and Invisible Soldier. What other information do we have on him? He was modest, according to Business Insider's Nordic Edition. The same source claims that he would wait for his victims at distances that ranged from 150 meters to 300 meters, on average. He was difficult to see in his camouflage, and the cold made it impossible to see his breath as he shoveled snow into his mouth. 
He was interviewed by the BBC on a few occasions, thus the following is all we know. Haya apparently preferred a life in the bush and was what we may refer to as a Finnish rustic. Interviews revealed that he enjoyed skiing, shooting, and hunting. According to the same source, the Russians dreaded this man so greatly that they attempted to kill him by simply shelling the region where he was at one point. However, they were unsuccessful, and the White Death was able to escape. They once dropped an artillery round on him as well, although Haiha supposedly only suffered a shredded coat and escaped with a small scratch this time. He allegedly regarded his job as a sniper the same way he did hunting, once assuring the press that he had no remorse for murdering. As much as I could, he claimed, I merely did my duty and what I was supposed to do. According to the BBC, his method of operation included mastering the use of sounds, smoke, and artillery fire to conceal his movements when switching places. During the war, maps were extremely rare, so Haiha used his memory to locate the finest hiding places. According to reports, he was constantly meticulous, if not downright obsessed, about getting into position, making sure his rifle wouldn't jam, and basically preparing the area where he would be shooting from. The odd thing was that his M-2830 gun had no telescopic sight at all, despite the fact that Haiha had hunted with it all of his life and was therefore highly accustomed to it. It is reported that when he was younger, he used to go bird hunting in the woods, which required an exceptional shot. This is supposedly one of the reasons why hunters frequently produce the best snipers. At the army shooting range, you can't concentrate on moving targets, therefore having prior expertise killing animals is essential. According to the BBC, he learned to evaluate the impacts of wind and rain on shooting and conditions in forests as a young man. Unfortunately, our honorable marksman was finally shot in the face, and the bullet severed a large portion of his jaw. He reportedly lived the remainder of his life in almost constant discomfort and resembled sloth from the Goonies in appearance. Although he had 26 surgical procedures, his face will never be the same. But he continued to hunt, and his vision was always as good as it had been before the war. His victims were never again human, and perhaps since moose were his preferred prey, he didn't frequently miss. Even with a Finnish president, he went on a few hunting expeditions. If you are interested in learning more, a book called The White Sniper is currently available. We'll leave you with a quote right from the horse's mouth, war is not a pleasant experience, but who else would protect this land unless we are willing to do it ourselves? So, have you ever fired a firearm? Do you believe you possess the necessary skills to work as a professional sniper? Post your comments to let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, and, as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.